Wedge Pond. Now, this is a location that I have been to many times before, and it's really well known for being a autumn photography location. You get these amazing trees kind of lining the shorefront, as well as aspen trees that run down the side and you can shoot from within. But I've always wanted to go here in winter, and specifically not just winter, but during the very first snowfall of winter. That means you'd get snow over the trees and on the mountains, but hopefully the lake will still be open and show that pretty epic reflection. We've just had the first snowfall here in the city in Calgary, and the city's looking pretty nice. And if it's snowed here, then it's definitely snowed in the mountains. So I think tomorrow is gonna to be my best chance. Whoa, <laughs> minus 20 out there this morning. But just grab some caffeine because I think there might be a little bit of wildlife on this drive, so I wanna make sure I'm staying pretty alert. Wedge Pond is just about an hour away from Calgary. And it's a pretty simple drive actually. You just drive down Highway 1 until you get to the Kananaskis turning. And then once you turn off, it's about another 15 minutes or so to get to the pond itself. And then from the car park, it's a super easy walk. So it's a really good little spot if you're Calgary based or even Banff based. I wanna just come out and get some good photography without too much effort. So out here in Kananaskis, it's been about minus 10 or below for the last five or six days. So I'm really hoping that that little pond hasn't frozen over quite yet, but it's gonna be pretty close to doing so. And what is really wild about that temperature is right now it says minus 17 on my car. But about a week ago, it was plus 20. So winter has hit us really hard and really fast this year. As well as that pond being open, I am also really relying on the clouds being in my favor this morning. When I left Calgary this morning, there was not a single bit of clear sky. It was completely clouded over. But as I've come into Kananaskis, it has cleared up. Ideally, I want some cloud, but not a lot. The sun needs to be able to peek through. So whether it's cleared in the direction I need it to, we are really gonna have to wait and see on that, but fingers crossed. As well as all those factors aligning, I'm now also stuck behind a snow plow. So I don't even know if I'm gonna make it there in time. The sunrise is in about 10 minutes and we are going at about 30 kilometers an hour. Ooh. Well, I've made it to the car park. It does look like the conditions are aligning pretty well for me now. I still need to put my boots on. There's golden light hitting those mountains. I need to get a bit of a move on. No time to do them up properly. As I mentioned before, luckily it is just a short walk from the car park there, probably like one or two minutes through the woods here. The lake is just down there, I can't quite see it yet. Come on, looks like there's some really nice light on the mountain. Just gotta hope there's a good reflection here this morning and the lake is still open. Oh wow, 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 wow. Look at this. So I think the first port of call this morning is I'm just gonna grab a really quick shot of just the full reflection of all the mountains to make sure I have something. And then afterwards, I think I'm gonna go and search around and maybe find something a little bit more interesting with a little bit of really nice foreground in there. But I'm gonna get my tripod set up really quickly. For the first shot of the day, I have added a neutral density filter, which I believe is a nine stop. I just wanna try and draw out that exposure a little bit to kind of maybe 10 seconds, 
There is a little bit of rippling in the water this morning, so hoping just to smooth that out and maybe get a little bit of movement in the clouds as well. Ideally, I would have been here maybe 20 minutes earlier so I could set up a bit more properly, but that's just how it goes. That snowplow kind of got in the way. But apart from that, the conditions are pretty awesome. You might just about be able to see that round the kind of edge of the lake here, we've got a little thin layer of ice right on the edge and we've got these kind of nice, almost like snow bubbles around the edge. And I suppose the temptation as a photographer is always to kind of run to the front and uh, see that reflection. But at this time of year, you have to be really careful with your foregrounds because at the moment, this is all pristine white. But if I stand in it, obviously it's gonna be full of footprints. So the best thing to do is to start further back kind of scout out your foregrounds as you make your way forward towards your subject. Now I found a couple of rocks here to use in my foreground and there's this nice little bit of ice kind of edging the lake. You've got a good sprinkling of fresh snow over everything as well. So I think that's gonna work really well. Like obviously the light's gone a bit now, there's no golden light on those peaks, but the light is nice and soft. There's a little bit of mist on the lake. So I think that's still gonna work really well anyway. Let me show you how I frame this up. All right, I think you can just about see this on the back of the camera here, but you can see those two rocks just here in the middle. And I've kind of tried to line them up to fit in that gap between these two peaks. And you can see I've got the edge of ice running along from the bottom right corner here, kind of up and through the frame. I've opted to not include a lot of sky because right now there's not much going on. There is a bit of gray cloud. Um, but if there was a bit more of a dramatic sunrise, I'd probably add a bit more cloud into the composition. But I think given the conditions, this will work out pretty well. I'm gonna try it again with a longer exposure just to try and flatten out that lake a little bit. But let's see how it turns out. So I'm using the same foreground still, but I've decided I'm now gonna shoot a portrait shot. And there's a couple of reasons for that. I mean, one is it's always useful to have a landscape version and a portrait version of pretty much any photograph, because you might find someone wants to use them in a certain way, or say, posting on Instagram is better for a kind of a portrait shot, but when I share things on YouTube or print them, it's normally landscape. And if by chance someone wants to buy an image and they need the other version, it's always good to have both with you. The second reason is as well is I can really get more detail in that foreground. You can see I've got a little bit closer and angling the camera down a bit and getting these rocks at the edge of frame elongates them a bit and makes them look a bit larger. And there's some really nice details in the ice and on the snow there. So I really wanna showcase that in this portrait shot. So you can just about see here as well that I've got these rocks here in the bottom left-hand corner of the frame here. So because they're on the edge of frame there, they are looking quite nice and big, getting that detail. I am gonna end up focus stacking this one as well. You can see I'm gonna focus stack here on the mountains. And then I'm gonna focus stack down here on the rocks as well and take an exposure too. Because those rocks there are so close to the lens, it is gonna look a bit soft. Even at F11, even if I focused in the middle, the rocks will still look soft. So that focus stack of the foreground and the background is pretty important in this shot. Let me show you what I mean here with the rocks in the foreground. You can see them in the uh, bottom left corner there. So if I tilt the camera downwards, you're gonna see they start looking a little bit smaller. And if I bring them right to the edge of frame, you can see they start stretching out and looking a bit more dominant. And there's some really nice details on those rocks and in the snow, so I do want to involve those in the composition. But once again, you can see like down in the middle, much smaller, towards the corner of frame on this portrait version, looking much bigger. I've just about lost the feeling in my toes now. So I think it's pretty much time to call it a day, but what a morning and what a location. 
it's so good to visit somewhere I've been to many times before, but never in this season. So I'm pretty stoked on some of the images that I've got this morning. Do let me know what you think of those in the comments below. And once again, thank you for watching. I always appreciate it. Please subscribe if you can. And if you want to see more of the Canadian Rockies in winter, where to photograph, where to hike and what to do, then definitely follow along. Hopefully I will see you on the next one.